Hi students. So today we start the important lecture about static and dynamic stability. So we are going to describe these two concepts with respect to a general system and then talk about the airplane. So this is lecture 51 in the aerospace engineering course. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now let us take a look at a typical airplane. Let's say this airplane is in cruise flight. And so static stability is essentially a concept which indicates the airplane's initial tendency after being disturbed. So here the word initial tendency is very important. And typically the disturbance can come from a source such as a gust. So whenever you are flying in an aircraft, there are various atmospheric disturbances out there. So for example, there could be a velocity variation in this manner I've shown here. This is an example of a gust. And so what happens is that this gust goes and hits the aircraft and that's a disturbance. And so what you essentially want is that after this disturbance hits the aircraft, it can come back to its starting position. That is something you want in many cases. And stability is essentially something which tries to characterize this particular concept for an aircraft. So before we look at aircraft, let us try to look at a simple system first in each case. So here I have considered a bowl shaped system here and there are these balls here. So there is a ball here. This is the equilibrium position. Now let's say I move this ball to some place here. Essentially, I gave this ball a small disturbance. Now after this, because of this system, I know that the ball is going to want to weigh make its way back to this equilibrium position. So that's what this disturbed position is going to do. It's going to come back here. So what we can say is that this particular system, which is defined in this diagram, this has an initial tendency to return to its original position if it's disturbed. And this kind of system is known as a positive statically stable system, or we can say this is an indication of positive static stability. Sometimes it is simply called a statically stable system. So if we look at an aircraft situation, what would happen is that the aircraft is flying along like this. So essentially it is in equilibrium condition. Let's say the forces in the CG are zero and then it's hit by a gust. So that's the disturbance. And so what happens is that after the disturbance, the aircraft tends to get back to its equilibrium position. So this is something you want in many aircraft. For example, if you are creating a small aircraft for a training system, training mission, then you would like it to be statically stable or be such that it has positive static stability. So these words are used every now and then. Sometimes we say the airplane is statically stable. Sometimes we say the airplane has positive static stability. Now, there is also the theoretical concept of neutral static stability. So let's say we take a system like this. Essentially, we have a plane here and we have this ball here in the equilibrium position. Now, if I were to displace this ball here, the tendency of this ball would be simply to stay in this disturbed position. So this is known as neutral static stability. So what it means is that the initial tendency of a system is to stay in the new position if you disturb it. So if we are going to apply this system to an aircraft, then let's assume the equilibrium position once again, the airplane is flying along in cruise. It's disturbed, let us say, by a gust. And essentially, it tends to stay there in that disturbed position. So let's say the angle here was something like two degrees. Here it's disturbed to five degrees. It stays on at this five degree position here. So this is the neutral static stability, which is again a theoretical concept. Most airplanes are not neutrally statically stable. So that's something to remember. Now let's look at the concept of negative static stability. Again, we take a system here. So we have a hill type of situation here. And so if you are in an equilibrium condition with this ball, then after some time, if you move it from its starting position, what will happen is that it may try to move further off from this position. So this is something which is known as a statically unstable system. The initial tendency of the system was to move off from its starting position and go further beyond. So this is not something you want to have in 
many simple aircraft. For example, if you have a typical pilot trainer, you don't want this kind of system, but there are certain situations where you may have to deal with these kind of systems in airplane flight dynamics also. So let us look at the situation as to what happens in the actual aircraft. So again, you have the equilibrium condition here. Let's say it got hit by a gust and so it went to some disturbed condition here. And then what happens is that if it is a statically unstable airplane, it's going to move further from this starting position. So the departure is going to be further from the equilibrium position. So the initial tendency again of this airplane is to move away from the original position if disturbed. So remember in the case of neutral, it just tried to remain in this position. In the case of the stable airplane, it tried to get back. And in the case of the unstable airplane, it went further off from the position it was in, in the equilibrium case. Now, beside the concept of static stability, there is a very important concept of dynamic stability. So let's look into that. Now, the previous examples clearly showed that static stability showed that the airplane had an initial tendency to come back after it was disturbed. So again, the word initial tendency is very important. Static stability is essentially based on that. Now, dynamic stability indicates how the airplane will behave over a period of time after it is being disturbed. So this is something which is more of a time dependent response of the system. So let's look at an example here. Let's say the airplane is in an equilibrium condition, which I have shown here with the red line here. And what happens is that at that particular condition, let's say it has an angle alpha E with respect to the horizontal. Now let's say it got hit by a gust and so it got disturbed to this blue line here and here the angle is alpha. So essentially we can say that the disturbance is alpha minus alpha E. And then we can try to look at how this disturbance would behave with time. So here I have plotted this alpha minus alpha E, which is the difference between the equilibrium and the disturbed position. And so what happens here is that if the system is statically stable and dynamically stable and it is aperiodic, then we get a decay of the response like this. So again, this kind of disturbance, it becomes zero. That's something you want in most cases. And in this case, you can clearly see that the system is statically stable at the point near t equal to zero and it's also dynamically stable. Now, in some cases, you have a statically stable system, but the dynamically stable system can lead to a damped oscillatory behavior. So here I have shown that type of system here. And you can see here the disturbance essentially comes down to zero. So it is dynamically stable. And also here you can see that it's statically stable because it's trying to come down. So how we know a system is statically stable is that at t equal to zero, it's going to try to come down towards the zero value. So essentially, if we want to look at a static stability system, we have to look at the vicinity of t equal to zero there. Now, we can also have a dynamically unstable system, but it is statically stable. So here you can see the statically stable system is here because near t equal to zero, this is actually going down to its starting position. But after some time, this essentially tends to diverge. So essentially, this is a clear system where you have static stability, but you do not have dynamic stability. So if you are somebody who thinks mathematically, you can clearly see that static stability is based on the initial response of the system. That is the behavior of alpha minus alpha E at T near zero. And dynamic stability is based on the time history of the system. So essentially, if you are able to plot alpha minus alpha E as a function of T, which I have done in some of the previous graphs, then you are going to know whether the system is dynamically stable or not. So let's define some important things about dynamic stability. We see that a dynamically stable airplane eventually returns to and remains at its equilibrium position over time. So all these words are important here. It will 
be an airplane which returns to its equilibrium position and remains there. That is something which is very important because what may happen, it may return and then again depart from that point. That's not a dynamically stable system. Also, we will see that a dynamically stable airplane must be statically stable, but the reverse is not true. That is static stability does not ensure dynamic stability. So let's try to pictorially take a look at some of these concepts. So here I have tried to plot the typical path of a system which is positive in terms of dynamic stability. So here the aircraft goes like this and after some time it essentially reaches the equilibrium position again. So the oscillations dissipate with time, they decay with time or they abate with time. So this is something which is positive for many cases and so it's something which shows that the system is dynamically stable. Now the aircraft can also be neutrally stable in terms of dynamic stability. So in that case, what would happen? The oscillations would simply continue with time. They are not getting damped out. So that is a situation of neutral dynamic stability. And also there could be a situation where the oscillations increase with time. So here you are seeing the oscillations are progressively increasing with time. And this is a situation of negative dynamic instability or I would say dynamic instability of the system. So the oscillations increase over time in this case. So let us summarize the results today or the discussion today. We saw that static stability increases airplanes or rather indicates the airplane's starting tendency after being disturbed. So essentially when the airplane is flying and you give it some disturbance, the starting tendency at that point or the initial tendency at t equal to zero, that is what is going to tell you about the static stability of the system. However, if you look at what happens over a longer period of time, then you are going to know about the dynamic stability of the system. So dynamic stability can typically be obtained by plotting the time response of the system. So that is something which is very important. In many systems, you have to calculate the dynamic response of the system and very often that can be done by solving some kind of differential equations which govern the behavior of the system. Now, one of the interesting things is that normally people may think that stability is something which is always good and stability is something which is good particularly if you are designing something which is very simple and which needs to be stable. For example, if you are designing an aircraft which is a trainer or something which is being used for passenger transport and so on. But there are certain aircraft such as fighter and those which take part in combat. In those cases, actually, you may have a greater requirement in terms of the maneuverability of the aircraft. So essentially, if you want to do various dogfights in the air and so on, then stability may not be a very good thing. You may actually want an unstable system so the pilot can control it better. But for most aircraft, which are essentially stable systems, simple small aircraft which fly around, which people learn to fly in and so on, they tend to be statically stable also. So that was a somewhat qualitative introduction to the concepts of static and dynamic stability. These concepts are important and they essentially are one of the reasons why we have the presence of the horizontal and vertical tail in aircraft. We are going to look at that in detail in the next lecture. So these particular concepts are going to play a big role in the flight dynamics of the system. So I'll end this lecture today and I will see you in my next lecture. See you then.